Then, in 1838, British physicist John Herschel took on the endeavour in his experimental attempt to catch a sunbeam. So how much energy does fall on the surface of the Earth from the sun? You can work it out with a beautifully simple experiment using only a thermometer, a tin full of water and an umbrella. Basically, you let the water heat up in the tin to ambient temperature, which here in Death Valley today is about 46 degrees Celsius. And then you put the thermometer in the water and you take the shade away and let the sun shine on the water. In direct sunlight, the water temperature begins to rise. By timing how long it takes the sun to raise the water temperature by one degree Celsius, you can figure out exactly how much energy the sun has delivered into the can of water. And from that, how much energy is delivered to a square metre of the surface. It turns out that on a clear day, when the sun is vertically overhead, that number is about a kilowatt. That's 10 100 watt bulbs can be powered by the sun's energy for every metre squared of the Earth's surface. In an audacious leap of imagination, Herschel used this figure to calculate the entire energy given off by the sun. So imagine adding up those kilowatts over this entire landscape. And then imagine following the sun's rays as they cover the entire surface of the Earth. But then, imagine this. The Earth is 150 million kilometers away from the sun. So actually, the sun is radiating energy out across a giant sphere with a radius of 150 million kilometers surrounding our star. How much energy does that make? It's four times pi times the distance pi to the sun squared, 11 squared, which is about is 400 million, 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 million watts. That is a million times the power consumption of the United States every year radiated in one second. And we work that out by using some water, a thermometer, a tin, and an umbrella. And that's why I love physics. Mm -hmm.